then they came along and they saw oh an ankylosaurus and they went Ooh. now of course alexander was currently an ankylosaurus too so he just strolled right up to them and the ankylosaurus went <clears throat> and alexander went <clears throat> and then the ankylosaurus shared some nice greens with him and he went oh this is quite tasty actually i didn't used to like eating grass and green things but now now that I'm an Ankylosaurus, I quite love it. Mm, he was munching away. And Alexander and Aunt Lisa and Crystal were like, come on, we've got other animals to see, okay? Anyway, so, carried on walking and they saw a group of velociraptors. And the velociraptors looked over at them like, what the? And then they went, ooh, food. Scrambleyumptious because they spotted that Andy was there and so was JB and they looked delicious. And Aunt Elisa went over to the Velociraptors like because she was pretending to be a Velociraptor. The Velociraptors didn't understand a word she was saying. And then the Velociraptors went <laughs> and they were like, We're gonna eat all of them in Velociraptor language. And they started chasing Alexander and Christopher, the dinosaurs and trying to grab Andy and JB off their backs. And Aunt Elise was like, this is going horribly wrong. So they were all running away in their dinosaur way. And the Velociraptors were jumping and jumping, and trying to grab Andy by the legs and trying to grab JB by the legs. And Spencer, the ghost dog, was going, rawr, rawr, rawr. it was pretty scary. And they went, what have we done with the clock? Where's the clock? And then the, the Velociraptors were just about to eat them when Christopher realised, I'm a T-Rex. Velociraptors should be terrified of me. And he turned around and the Velociraptors were looking at him like, we want to eat Andy off your back. And then Christopher went, Rah! and the Velociraptors went, Aah! and they ran away. That was a close call. Now, <laughs> Meanwhile, back in normal times, Sky was actually out on patrol at the seaside. And she decided to take a little break and go to the playground <clears throat> in her helicopter. As you do. And she spotted the clock. She was like, oh, hang on, I don't know if it works like that. <laughs> she got to the spot where all of the dinosaurs had been, where Alexander, Christopher and Aunt Elisa had been. And she spotted the dinosaur footprints and she thought, well, this is very fishy. What's going on here? I hope no one's released a load of dinosaurs in the playground. That would be a disaster. Hmm. So she called up the Paw Patrol and she said, Ryder, sir, there's a load of dinosaur prints at the playground. I I hope no one's got a dinosaur at the playground. That sounds really dangerous. And so all the uh, riders said, right, I want you to investigate, Sky. See what you can find. Now, just at that moment, the people in Dinosaur Times, Alexander, Christopher and Auntie Lisa, had found their way to Dinosaur Seaside. And at Dinosaur Seaside, they found an ancient cone snail, one of the first ever cone snails. And they were like, oh, let's go take a closer look. So they went, let's have a little dip in the water. What could possibly go wrong? So they took a little dip in the sea. Now, T-Rex is not well known for swimming, but Christopher the T-Rex dipped his head in, <laughs> blew some bubbles and looked at the cone snail. And Alexander, the Ankylosaurus, dipped his head in. And Aunt Elisa, the Velociraptor, and Andy loves a swim. So he dived straight in. Uh, Spence, the ghost dog, wasn't first, actually. He was just playing in the sand. And JB was there, and she was like, wow, a cone. I've never seen a cone snail. What do they do? And then suddenly, ow, 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 ow. The cone snail had shot her in the face. And she went, oh, I don't think I like cone snails very much at all, actually. And Alexander and Christopher and Auntie Lisa went, oh, this could be bad. Oh, dear. And 
So they said, we better get back to normal times and get JB to a doctor. Stat! That means really quick. And so they said, Andy, Andy, quick, quick, come over here. We've got to get JB back to get and see a doctor because cone snails zapped her in the face. And Andy was like, oh, fine, okay. Now, he turned around and there was an enormous, scary underwater dinosaur. Ah! Oh, no! And they quickly swam as fast as he could. <laughs> just made it to the beach and they all were gathered on the beach like covered in water soaking wet complete nightmare jb's face is swelling up just a disaster waiting to happen i said okay we've got to get out of here let's run to the clock as quickly as we can so they ran and 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 just as they reached the clock it went dung 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 and they all went to normal times and Skye who had been investigating had the absolute fright of her life as a T-Rex, an Ankylosaurus, a Velociraptor and a ghost dog leapt through the clock that had suddenly appeared in the playground and she went <sighs> and then fainted. Now, it was a bit of an issue because it took her ages to wake up. And they were like, Sky, Sky, it's okay, it's only us. And Andy had to get a little wet cloth and put it on her head. And Sky went, oh, what is it? What happened? And they explained about Aunt Lisa, Christopher and Alexander had just turned into dinosaurs. And they'd been back to dinosaur times. And that JB had been stung in the face by a cone snail. And that they needed to get her to a hospital really, really quickly. And Sky said, well, okay, now that you've explained all that, it makes perfect sense. And this ghost dog, what's, what? And then they explained about the ghost dog being friends with Jack and JB, and that actually is friendly, so don't worry. And then Sky went, okay, thank God for that, because I was really scared of ghosts, actually. And then she said, right, what we can do is I will fly JB in my helicopter all the way to the hospital, and then you guys can meet us there, okay? And so... That is what she did. And she got JB loaded up. And JB's face was like blowing up really massive. And she was finding it a little bit difficult to breathe by this point because it was all really swollen. She's allergic to cone snails. And so Sky flew her as quick as she could to the hospital. And when she landed there, she explained that JB had been stung in the face by a cone snail. And her people at the hospital were like, what on earth is a cone snail? And then she had to explain that a cone snail is a creature that lives under the sea and hunts by shooting out little harpoons of poison at its prey. And they went, ooh, that's pretty cool, actually. Let's look that up on YouTube. Oh, yeah, nasty. Okay, right. So they took JB in and they gave her a special injection that brought down the swelling and JB started to feel a lot better. Meanwhile, Aunt Lisa and Alexander and Christopher were in a bit of a fix because they thought, we can't go to the hospital as dinosaurs. We'll scare everyone after death. But luckily, the potion began to wear off and they went... <laughs> and then they went... Ah, oh, I'm a human being again. It was nice being a dinosaur, but actually, I like being a human being again. But then they realised, they ain't got any clothes on. Because the dinosaur, when they turned into dinosaurs, their clothes had got ripped to shreds. And they went, eh! I haven't got any clothes on, it's really embarrassing. So they sent Spencer, the ghost dog, to quickly run home while they hid behind the big stones at the playground, all in the nuddy. And he ran home and got them some clothes. Now he got them all sorts of weird clothes. He's got Papa's trousers for Auntie Lisa, and he got one of Mummy's tops for Alexander. And Christopher had all the wrong size shoes. They were all different ones and it all went a bit bonkers, but they all had some clothes. So they put on their weird looking clothes and they went, right, at least we've got clothes on. We look a bit silly. Everything's too big and the wrong way around, but we've got clothes on. Thank you very much, Spencer the ghost dog. Let's go to the hospital and check in on our lovely friend, JB. So, Aunt Lisa quickly snuck into the house, borrowed Papa's car keys. Be naughty, but that's what she did. Don't tell him. Don't. No. Don't tell him. 
Okay, good. And so then she drove Alexander and Christopher and herself and Spencer the ghost dog came along to, to the hospital. And thank goodness, JB was looking a lot better. And they were all extremely relieved. And so JB, the doctor said she could be released now because she was a lot better. She just had some extra medicine to take and that she was not allowed anywhere near any cone snails ever again. And so they said, well, I think to celebrate, we should all have a nice little sit down in the cafe at this hospital. And so that's what they did. Spencer, the ghost dog, had to hide in Aunt Lisa's handbag so we didn't scare anybody. But the rest of them all had sausages. Thought I'd forgotten that, didn't you? They all had some, I nearly did, sausages. And Aunt Lisa had nice coffee and so did JB. And they gave Spencer some sausages too. And then they had ice cream. And that is the end of the story. Love you. Bye-bye.